Let's talk about wind damage for a sec. There's three kinds of wind damage to uh, three tab shingles. Uh, number one is the tabs are gone or the shingles gone, right? It's just gone. Actually, there's really only two. If the tab is gone or flipped, right? You'll sometimes see flipped tabs. It's to, to my mind, it's the same thing as it's, it's just gone, right? So really, there's only two, two, two different kinds of wind damage here. Uh, the other one is a, what are called braided creases. And this is where the shingle gets blown up. The seal is broken, right? Uh, seal may have already been broken, okay? You're not paying for broken seals. This is an argument that you're going to love having with contractors. That's not hail or wind damage. It's not hail damage. It's not any kind of, it's, it's just the seal is broken because, of, again, of uh, what we could call fastener migration. Braided crease, right? So that means that the wind blew and the, the tab was loose. It didn't blow off. Maybe it almost blew off. And then the storm passed, right? But the, the the tab flapped around on the wind a bunch of times and made this crease across the top. That's wind damage. You're paying for that, okay? Braided creases. Love to see them. Count them up. Write it up. Move on to the next one. Obviously, you can have big sections of shingles get blown away. Here's a here's a reason not to do multiple layers. Um, the farther you get from the plywood, right, the, the shallower the nail is going into the plywood because it's pushed away from the plywood or from the, the basically the sheathing because you've got, and I'll go back to that picture here in a second, but you've got a layer, even just one layer of shingles, and then they're like, eh, I want to save some money, so we're going to do an overlay, right? We're going to do, you know, the county says we can do three layers. We can do three overlays. We do, never, never do an overlay. It's just, you're just asking for it to, to fall apart and to get blown away. It's so much easier for a, a multiple layer roof to have wind damage, really of any kind, than one that's nailed straight down to the plywood with only felt between, or underlayment between it and the wood, right? The farther you get away, the less purchase the nail can get, right? And the easier it is for wind to take it. In this case, um, this guy thought he was saving some money, right? He's got wood shingles. He's got... Uh, that looks like it. Um, maybe a T lock under there, or just a regular shingle, and then he's got another shingle. He's got at least three layers on here, right? Um, probably, and and if you see something like this, you're gonna have to ask the insured to, to let you inside and take a peek up into the attic because I'm gonna guess that they've got space decking, which you can pay for and you need to pay for. It's going to add two or three or four thousand dollars to your estimate, which is awesome, right? Um, this is cl clear, unquestionable wind damage. Uh, there are some missing tabs over here, so it depends on how repairable this roof is, uh, whether or not you can pay for this other slope. Depends on your estimating guidelines. There's a bunch of wind damage on this slope, so probably can get away with paying for it. Um, the estimating guidelines may say, nope, we're only paying for this slope and then repair this slope, right? Um, because this, this, this one is going to exceed the repair on this slope will absolutely exceed, uh, the replacement by, uh, 60, was it 66 or 75%, but also you can't really do the repair to this without tearing this whole thing off from redoing it. Contractors are going to argue that you can't have two, three layers and change the decking uh, slope to slope like this, but the insurance is probably going to be a little bit, I don't care, that's your problem kind of a situation. Um, you know, you shouldn't have done this in the first place. Uh, you can totally see the number. You pull up on this house, you, you can see the layers from the street, guaranteed, right? This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at hagueeducation.com. You could probably, you know, claims is the art of the, it's like politics, right? It's the art of the possible. You might be able to um, figure out a way to justify 
paying for this the whole front slope. Could be that the estimating guidelines say, hey, if you this is basically a dormer off of this front slope, and so we're going to count it as all one big slope, right? You just got to dig through your estimating guidelines, see if you can make the case for it, take the case to your manager. Don't argue this. Don't argue this stuff with the contractors on at the house because you don't know what you're going to be able to do in this case just yet, okay? Um, I'm going to try to find a way to, to total this roof out, and so are you, and it may be that you have to do a little bit of digging and legwork after you leave the house. So don't fight with anybody on Just say, hey, listen, I'll do what I can. I'll get back with you guys in you know, a couple days, right? And just leave it at that. You know, it doesn't have to be some big, complicated, you know, presidential debate or whatever. So for laminated shingles, you're not going to see, you might see braided creases, but you're not going to see like missing tabs. Usually with laminate shingles like this, the wind just takes the whole thing. It just blows, rips the whole thing right off there, right? This is a pretty common thing to see. Um, one thing that you can't really see, and it's kind of hard to depict, but if you see these nails, sometimes, this is probably what happened here. Well, it's definitely what happened here, but sometimes the wind will blow the, when it does this, it's blowing the shingle and it leaves the nails behind, right? It pulls right through the, um, the shingle. This is something that's kind of uh, a little bit controversial um, and some carriers dig their heels in on it. But it could be argued that a nail pull through or a shingle is lost because, you know, leaving the nail behind like this means that the nails were overdriven. They were driven into the roof too hard and too far. So they didn't get very good purchase on the shingle. And so it made it really easy for them to come off. I've always paid for nail pull throughs. You know, you get up on a slope sometimes and you're like, oh, I just see that one spot, right? But then you walk around and you just start like kind of flipping up just grabbing the corners of these things, you know, where that, where that row is, right. And just lift it. And if, the, if, if you pick it up and six rows comes up with it, it's still attached, right. And they're all stuck to each other, but they're all pulled through. Then I'm counting those personally. I'm going to count pull throughs like that. Cause it's hard to say that the storm didn't do it. Right. Um, back to this picture really quick though. So this is an unsealed tab, right. And you can see that there's dirt. <laughs> this is the telltale, right? You know, this is this is the, the the things you pull out of your back pocket when the contractor's like, well, how can you say that this wasn't caused by the wind? Well, there's dirt on there. And it looks like it's been there for a while. There's dead grass and leaves and all kinds of old like seed pods and stuff like that underneath the shingle. That didn't just happen the day before yesterday when the storm hit. It doesn't, you know, it takes a lot longer for stuff like that to dry out and die and whatever, right? This is this is probably caused by, because it's lifted, uh, what are called nail pull through, or uh, uh, not nail pull through, migrating fastener, which is staples or nails that, because again, we go back to that freeze and thaw cycle, right? The hot and the cold, the moisture and the, the, during the, the summer warm months, and then, the, then it, when it cools down, it gets really dry. The wood expands and contracts like this, right? It basically like squeezes on the, the nails sitting in the in the uh, in the wood, right? And it gets squeezed and relaxed, and squeezed and relaxed, and it just kind of like it's like the watermelon seed thing, right? It just basically squirts that nail right back out of the roof, and it'll come back up, and it pushes that tab up, and and it'll it can pop the seal, and it can you know. It, it makes those like lifted shingles look right. Absolutely not sudden direct physical loss. It is a long-term wear and tear thing. Can't pay for it. Okay. Now it can contribute to the shingles being blown off, right? Because they're not sealed at all. So fastener migration might make this happen. I don't care. I'm buying this. I'm going to try to buy this roof if I get enough, you know, at least the slope anyway. It doesn't matter to me how the shingles became, became unsealed or whether the nails are fastened down correctly or not, um, unless I'm explicitly told, you know, otherwise, which I've never have been in 20 years, um, this is getting paid for no problem, 100,000 million percent. Honorable mention here, um, before I jump on to the next thing, this is an older wood shake roof, and you can tell this is fresh wind damage, 
right? And this is this is a crunchy old roof too, right? So you're gonna probably break a bunch of these when you're walking around on them. But it's the, not the same color as this silver gray uh, shingles around it because it hasn't had time to weather. This is fresh. So you might get up on a roof and see like missing shingles and shakes and it's all silvered in. Well, it's probably been like that for a while. So if you have dents and dings on roof vents and gutters, do you total a roof as well? Learn how to use collateral damage to make a more accurate call on hail damage in the next video.